Hi there friends! Welcome back to our channel, to another fun and exciting learning adventure. Today we're going to learn about bioaccumulation, organisms and their environment. Are you ready? Let's get started. All living organisms carry out seven life processes, movement, reproduction, sensitivity, growth, respiration, excretion and nutrition. How does the accumulation of toxins in the environment affect organisms that call it home? All living organisms have a special habitat, on land or in water. The special place where an organism lives is its habitat. Habitats can be found in the environment. Organisms rely on others for various needs, such as food, shelter, reproduction and survival. We call this intricate web of relationships interdependence. But this delicate balance is under threat, with different natural events and human activities introducing toxins into the environment. Most toxins are excreted and do not stay in the organisms. But, at low levels, some toxins can be taken by organisms at the bottom of the food chain, such as plants and algae. This is called bioaccumulation. Bioaccumulation occurs because the organisms either 1. have been taking up the toxins faster than they can excrete, or 2. have no way of processing or degrading the toxin. When primary consumers eat these plants or algae, they also take in the toxins on them. As a result, they now have high levels of toxins. The apex predator feeding on the animals below it receives the highest concentration of toxins. This high toxin level can severely affect the organism and, eventually the entire ecosystem. How do toxins enter the food chain and affect the organisms? One example is the introduction of mercury in bodies of water. It used to enter the ecosystem through insecticides and paints. Small animals and plankton absorb mercury, which small fish then eat. However, because fish eat a lot of plankton, the mercury concentration in fish is now higher than in plankton. Larger fish feed on smaller fish. These larger fish are then consumed by even bigger ones, like tuna. This means tuna now has a high mercury concentration, also known as biomagnification. Humans who tend to eat them could get sick from mercury poisoning. Today, the use of mercury is heavily regulated, if not entirely banned, because of its toxicity and environmental impact. Other chemicals and microplastics, tiny fragments of plastics, also pollute land, air and water and eventually enter the food chain. What can you do to help prevent these toxins from entering and harming the ecosystem? Let's recap. Each organism in the environment relies on each other for food and survival. This is called interdependence. Introducing toxins and pollutants can affect the delicate balance within the ecosystem. Absorbed toxins can build up in an organism over time. A process called bioaccumulation. Some toxins polluting the environment can build up in higher levels of the food chain, biomagnification, and cause more harm. Choose a pollutant that affects your local area. How would it impact the environment if its levels do not decrease? Thank you for listening. Have a wonderful week ahead and see you next time. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more fun learning adventures. See you next time. Bye-bye.